Hello my dear students, welcome back. We are doing psychiatry sessions and on this session we are going to do eating disorders. Please remember, in eating disorders the appetite is normal and the abnormal behaviors are associated with food and that's why we call it eating disorders and obesity is not an eating disorder. In eating disorders there is use of compensatory mechanisms to avoid the weight gain like vomiting, diuretic abuse, enemas, laxatives, drugs or thyroid hormones to lose weight and liposuction. Various mechanisms are practiced, compensatory mechanisms are practiced by the patients. The patient engages in sports and strenuous exercise that's called hypergymnasia, ballet dancing, feeling that I look fat despite normal or below normal body weight is the characteristic of eating disorders. Malnutrition, electrolyte disturbances, arrhythmias and melanosis coli are the complications resulting from the behavior of the patient. Anorexia nervosa is the first important disorder. It's a life-threatening disease and the mortality rate is 18% and the cause of mortality is cardiac arrhythmias due to hypokalemia and malnutrition, so decreased potassium. Please remember this. According to the dsm 4 tr criteria, Weight less than 85% of expected or BMI less than 17.5. That's the criterion for diagnosing anorexia nervosa. There should be failure to gain weight during period of expected growth. There should be strong fear of gaining weight and disturbed body image. And missing of three consecutive periods in the postmenarchial woman. These are some important DSM TR4 criteria. If menstruation is present, and all other criteria are present, you don't call it anorexia nervosa, you call it eating disorder, not otherwise specified. The subtypes of anorexia nervosa are number one, restricting type, in which there is excess fasting, dieting or exercising and there is no purging or binge eating behavior. The second type is called binge eating purging type anorexia nervosa which is comparatively rare and there is excess fasting dieting or exercising and purging or binge eating is also present. As far as the management of anorexia nervosa is concerned, we divide it into two stages. Stage 1 to restore the body weight to save the life. So you put the patient for office visits, for follow up or you might need hospitalization. The stage 2 is the long term management of anorexia nervosa and you need to prevent relapse during this stage. As far as the medications are concerned, antidepressant medications can be tried although they are not much useful and they include amitriptyline and fluoxetine and also includes cyproheptadine. Family therapy is directed for the child's insistence on dieting and the over-controlling mother. The prognosis is likely to be good if there is early age of onset, there is early treatment and there is no history of hospitalization. We go to bulimia nervosa, bulimia nervosa purging type. In this there is binge eating and compensation. The compensatory behaviors are self-induced vomiting, laxative or diuretic abuse and the purging behavior. You find in these patients parotid gland swelling and infection due to a repeated self-induced vomiting act. There may be tooth enamel erosion and dental caries. The binge eating and purging behavior should be present twice a week for three months. Then you go for diagnosis of bulimia nervosa purging type. Bulimia nervosa non-purging type is the second type. There is binge eating but there is no purging. Instead, there are other compensatory mechanisms such as hypergymnasia. So that's about bulimia nervosa non-purging type in which there is no purging behavior. As for the management of bulimia nervosa is concerned, the psychologic treatment in the form of cognitive and behavioral therapy and the pharmacologic treatment with antidepressant drugs that's the heterocyclic antidepressants, MAO inhibitors and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors that's SSRI like fluoxetine and the antidepressant treatment is responded to in a good way in bulimia nervosa. You can try psychologic treatment as well as pharmacotherapy and these things together, combined together, they produce a good response. Now we have a nice table here. I request you to look at the slide and have a look at the slide in which you have anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa 
the two diseases major diseases compared on a table look at the table the first row anorexia nervosa the weight is grossly below normal and in bulimia nervosa the weight is relatively normal in anorexia nervosa amenorrhea has to be reported and in bulimia nervosa there's ir irregularities of menses in anorexia you get serious electrolyte disturbance in the form of hypokalemia and acidosis which is very severe there may be elevated cholesterol liver enzymes and blood urea nitrogen there may be less glucose and the patient might have anemia and the wbc count may be abnormal in bulimia nervosa there is less severe disturbances there could be hypokalemia but it is less severe and all other disturbances which i mentioned before are less severe going down on the last row on the table some characteristics of anorexia nervosa they include lanugo that is the downy body here on the shoulders and trunk bone density is decreased there may be cyanosis and cold intolerance and the history of syncope the normal appetite is very important this patient is likely to be a good student and there may be conflict with family these are some of the important associated factors in bulimia nervosa you can have esophageal varices you can have enamel erosion and caries you can have parotid gland swelling or infection and metacarpal phalangeal calluses because the patient is repeatedly putting the hands in the mouth to induce vomiting which is called russell's sign i take you to the next slide the comparison continued between anorexia and bulimia in anorexia nervosa there is intense fear of obesity and weight gain and in bulimia nervosa there is worrying about the weight gain in the patients with anorexia the self image is not congruent with the actual image and bulimia nervosa the patients have poor self image anorexia nervosa patients often deny the disorder this denial of disorder whereas in bulimia nervosa there is distress about having the disorder anorexia nervosa patients show lack of interest in sex and in bulimia there is relatively normal sexuality anorexia nervosa patient denies depression please remember this and with this you can remember the antidepressant drugs are less helpful as we already said in bulimia this patient reports depression accepts depression and the antidepressant drug treatment is quite useful in bulimia nervosa we go to the next slide to understand some other associations bulimia and anorexia these disorders are more common in females 1 to 3% in males it's very less it's 0.1 to 0.2% it appears in the late adolescents and in the young adults and these patients are high academic achievers and from high ses that's socio economic status anorexia and bulimia differential diagnosis is quite important you must rule out cancers regional enteritis and chronic infections we must rule out major depressive disorder this could be associated with less eating there could be klein levin syndrome in which there are episodic eating binges and hypersomnia and there's no over concern about weight this point can differentiate and the borderline personality disorder patients they have poor impulse control and they can have impulsive eating so that's regarding the differential diagnosis of anorexia and bulimia this topic is a short topic but very important from your examination points of view